Namaste. I'm Rishabh and today we continue our journey into the world of Indian classical music taals or rhythm cycles. In the previous two episodes we covered teen taal, ek taal, the 16 beat cycle, the 12 beat rhythm cycles. By the way, if you haven't watched the teen taal and the ek taal episode, please do go check them out because it will help you maintain a sequence basically like everyone else. So again for people who haven't watched the previous episodes we are not discussing these taals these rhythm cycles in a lot of detail our main purpose here is to just learn how to identify the taals the rhythm cycles identify the sum identify the khali identify the various beats identify from where we are coming back to the sum and maybe with time learn to recognize the greatness of these artists that we cover on this channel their greatness how they're playing between the confines of this taal in the rag that they're performing so with that let's begin our discussion on jhap taal or one of the most common 10 beat rhythm cycles so again from the previous episodes if you haven't watched them go check them out so if you have watched them you would know that if it's a 10 beat rhythm cycle we count from 1 to 10 and then when we hit 10 we come back to 1 because it's a rhythm cycle so similarly for jhap taal it would go something like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 Ten and one. This one is the sum. And again, adding another layer to this, we discuss the concept of talis and khalis, wherein tali or a clap signifies a place of weightage in the tal, and khali signifies emptiness. This concept is also known as khali and bhari, but uh, we'll discuss that sometime later. It's pretty much the same thing. So on this ten beat cycle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one. Let's add the talis and the khalis. So how would that look like? So adding the talis and the khalis, it would look something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one. So where are all the talis and the khalis? Let's see. So the sum is on the first beat. One, two, three. There's a tali on the third. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is khali, so there's a khali on the sixth beat. So let's start from the top. One, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one. As we just saw, there's a tali on the eighth beat also. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one. We have to come back to the one, which is the sum. And again, adding another layer to this, a third layer to this. It's almost like making a biryani. So, adding another layer to this, what will happen? Every tal has its own bowls or lyrics. So, we first recited just the numbers, then we added the tali and the khali. So, now let's add the lyric, the essence of the tal. The cushions are the essence of the chair. To the plain numbers that we just recited. So, the bowls go something like this: dhi na. Di di na and ti na, di di na, di na. And so this keeps going on and on. So instead of the numbers that we just recited with the tali and the khali, let's now recite the tali and the khali with the bowls. So that would sound something like di na, di di na, ti na, di di na, di na. So this keeps going on and on and on. another quick you know kind of a practical point that we discuss about each taal in every episode because playing these taals on tabla on the tabla or reciting them padhant as we discussed can be very different from what is you know mentioned in the books in theory so practically i have seen many great ustads do a double clap on 3 and 4 what does that mean so what we decided was 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 7 8 9 10 and 1 what i've seen many great uh, tabla players and even singers do is a double clap on 3 and 4 so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 7 8 9 10 10 and 1 in bowls it would sound something like dhi na dhi dhi na ti na dhi dhi na dhi my personal preference is the second one or the non theoretical one because it helps give a sense of the impending sum so what does that mean so let's recite the first one first the theoretical one first so that would sound something like a little faster dhi na dhi dhi na 
Dina, di, di, na, and di. Whereas the second one with the double clap on three and four, that would sound something like di, na, di, di, na, di, na, di, di, na, and di. It's a very subtle difference. It takes some time to you know sort of recognize what difference, what subtle difference this makes. But it does help give a sense of the impending khali, impending sum. So I prefer the second one, to be honest. And finally, we come to the padhant, the way how you're supposed to recite the tal. Again, if we don't have any intonation, any tone in our voice, we would sound like a robot in the sense, dhi na dhi dhi na or one two three four five. It's not even important for you to know the bowls. If you just recite the numbers with the tone, with the specific tone that Shabtal is supposed to be recited with, it will make a hell lot of difference. So there's a lot of difference between one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one. So with the bowls that we just discussed, it would sound something like di na, di di na, and ti na. So you see how just modulating our voice and this modulation also has a purpose. This modulation or the way how we are reciting it is exactly the way the tabla player plays it on the tabla. And this modulation on the percussion instrument on the tabla comes from the base of your left palm from your wrist. And another quick practical bonus point is that maybe which you will not find in the books.